I've got to bring to light some things, and it's called chain breaking power. Now, you see, a lot of times when we think about chain breaking power, we think about the deep, dark chains of sin that have us bound up. What I want to give you today through the power of the Holy Spirit is that he may reveal to you in your heart that today if you're thinking you're sitting here and you've been set free, you actually have some change that Satan has blinded you to and you need free from those things too. See, there are chains that we can have and not even know it. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, and I'm going to go fast. If you don't know where 1 Kings is, it's right before 2 Kings, amen. It says, how long will you be caught between two opinions? How long will you be caught between two opinions? He said, either follow God or follow Baal. Live for God or live for Baal, but stop trying to have enough religion to make you feel like you may go to heaven. God's saying to us today, follow me, be all in. I wrote this this week, so I'm going to read it. But America, and this is not a, a message for America today, it's for CCOC. Look at your neighbor, say it's for you. America cannot expect to continue to be blessed, nor continue to expect to have the hand of God's protection if they continue to have a multiplicity of little G-O-D-S's. My God is a jealous God. And he did not say that you can serve two gods. He did not say you can have two masters. He said you'll either love one and hate the other. There's no such thing, if you want to get technical, <laughs> as a part-time Christian. So God told Elijah, I want you to tell them that it's not going to rain for three and a half years. Now, how many of you remember last summer? But even last summer, we had dew. God told Elijah, you tell them there will be no dew, there will be no rain for three and a half years. Do you know what the condition of southeast Texas would be if we did that for three and a half years? I'm going to tell you, I don't think we've ever, a hurricane has never done what that would do in three and a half years. But much like in Elijah's time, America is ignoring God's commands. I'm going to take it a step farther and say that I believe the American church is so full of religion and rules, they've forgotten to let God be God. Brother came up to me yesterday. Oh, I could tell y'all so many wonderful testimonies of what took place under that big roof over there. What I'm going to tell you is in the first major event this church ever had in that place, there was people that came to know Jesus yesterday. And may I also add, you can't put a price tag on that. But he came to me and he said, there's something strange about you. Y'all did not have to laugh that hard. <laughs> I'm going to give you the story, but I'm going to change the numbers because it's absolutely irrelevant and personally none of your business. <laughs> but I had a little boy trailer over here with some boards on it. Put a sign up, said, if you need some boards, call me. So a guy calls me. I meet him over there, and he says, how much for this board? I said, well, brother, I ain't in the board business. I, I don't even know what to tell you. I, I don't have a, I hadn't even thought about really that somebody would even come over here and do this. I just did it so I would just to get rid of some of them. He goes, well, I need, I, I want this board. I need to know how much you need for this board. I said, brother, I'm not in the board business. Make me an offer that, that's fair to both of us and I'll say yes. And he smiled at me and I loved his honesty. 
He says, well, I'm afraid I'm going to tell you more than you think and do. I can appreciate that, can't you? I said, well, I'm going to make you a deal. I'm going to give you my word of oath that whatever you say, if it was more than I'm thinking, I won't let you do it. I'll only let you give what I'm thinking. Now, it doesn't matter what it was, but the story I'm about to share with you, it was that many times more. He said, well, I'll give you $5 for that board. I said, oh, no, I'm not taking five for it. He goes, well, I can't offer you any more than that. I said, no, no, no. I said, I was thinking a dollar. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> he goes, that's crazy. Do you, do you understand I just told you I'll offer you $5 for this board? I said, yes, sir. But I told you that if you, asked, you, you wanted to give more than I would take, that I wouldn't let you do that. And he goes, but I wouldn't have known. And I looked at him and I pointed in the sky. I said, yeah, but he would have. Now I ain't going to lie to y'all. <laughs> there was a little devil over here on his shoulder. Because mama needs some shoes. And little angel on his shoulder. And I said, no, sir, just a dollar. A dollar for the board. When I pointed up there and said, but he would know. Man, it got quiet. Drove his truck around there. We loaded the board. He's about to get in his truck. He stopped. He goes, hadn't been to church in a lot of years. Used to go with my grandma. He goes, what time does church start tomorrow? <laughs> See, now watch. I realized immediately what God had done and what God would not have gotten to do if I hadn't been set free from the chain of greed. Greed can be a chain that causes someone else to not hear what God's trying to say. And I got to tell you the rest of that story, and then we got to move on. He said, I'll give you five, and I took one. And God more than ten times multiplied what I would have lost before the next day was over. Say ten times. Chain breakers. See, these, these false prophets wanted to be a chain breaker on the three and a half years. So, man, they get together and they build an altar and they put down their sacrifice and they begin to pray to their gods and they begin to plead with Baal to send the fire. And, and they prayed from morning to noon and no fire fell. Elijah, I like Elijah. He didn't sit back and be religious. He began to mock them. Yeah, I just, you'll get it later. I'm sure there was some religious person who said, now, now, the pastor Elijah, you don't need to be making fun of folk. <laughs> Elijah made fun of them. Publicly made fun of them. And said, you know what? I guess he's asleep. Your God can't hear you. Ha! <laughs> on and on. They did it until evening came and no fire fell. And then Elijah, the man of God, stood up. He says, I want you to repair this altar. I want you to dig the trenches deeper. I want you to soak it with more water. And he began to pray, and we're going to go fast. The, uh, did the fire of God fail when God's man got serious about what needed to happen? 
Listen to me. The fire of God will fall at CCOC when we begin to be people that are truly committed to what God wants. But he says, I need you to quit being having two opinions of where you're going to be with God and how you're going to live for him. You are, you are not, you are, you are not. In the middle of even one day, I am, but I am not. He says, I need you to serve me. We move into a kingdom statement that I want to get you, give you, but I don't want you to misunderstand it. So just be prepared. Everybody here this morning has got a situation that you would like for God to intervene with in some way. Can I get an amen? amen. Ain't none of us here. None of us here don't have something that we, we'd like for God to intervene in this morning. Do you know you can do more than pray about your situation? Well, all we can do is pray. No, you can do more than pray. Listen close. You just got to pray first. You'll get it in a minute. See, when I get done praying, oh, I can walk in all kind of power. When I get done praying, I can walk in all kind of authority. When I get done praying, the problem is we're just not praying. The Bible says, James 5, the effectual, say effectual, say fervent. Fervent prayer of a righteous man, man availeth much. That means just has advantage. That's why when I get ready for somebody to pray for me, I find somebody that knows that has the advantage. Hey, man. Now, I've got some good friends that are Baptist, and I know they know how to pray. But I don't just have any, any old body pray for me. Amen. If you slapping your wife around on Thursday, probably on Friday, I ain't going to ask you to pray for me. Oh, I'm going to hit home. You bragging on Facebook how drunk you got Saturday night and lived like a, a wild, com just moron, and then come to church and want to lay hands on me, I'm going to tell you, get your hands off me. And I'm looking dead down at the floor, and ain't nobody going to send me no emails. <laughs> I'm just here today to tell you, God says, I need y'all to choose one way or the other. It's, it's me or it's not me. I got to tell y'all, when if y'all can image D at 16... And at 62, it's even a better oof than that. Make sure I stay square with mama. <laughs> D was 16. I had just turned 17. And we had a youth event at the roller skating rink in Beaumont. And I was one of the youth that had a, had a vehicle. And so four youth rode with me. And one of these little youth girls... Wish that D didn't exist. <laughs> and so she sat behind me. Of course, D sat in the front. And, and she sat directly behind me. Now, don't laugh about this, but she would stick and flick my hair the whole way. I always wait to boom out like this, playing. <laughs> yeah, flick my hair then. And I ain't going to lie. I kind of liked it. And D got irritated and took it out on me. <laughs> so I got mad and took it out on her. And we just yank, 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 yank the whole time at the skating rink. Well, everybody knows in the 70s when you went to the roller skating rink, they always had the couple skating when the lights went down. <laughs> I left D sitting at the concession stand, went and got old Hussy. <laughs> and, we, and we roller skated to the song <laughs> got ready to go home I dropped D off first and Hussy last I knew I was in trouble because as she got out of the car and walked away there were these horns coming out of her head <laughs> now listen close ladies you're going to love this when I dropped off Hussy knowing that what I had was a good thing I immediately turned around and went back to Caney Head. 
and went to the door and knocked on her daddy's on, on her door and her daddy come. I said, Mr. Gene, can can I see D? He said, son, you don't want to see her right now. <laughs> I said, no, I want to see her. He goes, enter at your own risk. <laughs> I walk in the door, ladies, knocked on her bedroom door. She opened it. She took my senior ring and chucked it at me as hard as she could and hit me in the chest. She goes, you let me tell you something, you little jerk. You're going to decide tonight who you're going to love and who you ain't going to love. <laughs> So, so she's still wearing my senior ring. Amen. <laughs> now, we've had fun with this, but I'm going to say this and get emotional. I think God is sick of the people in churches that are so full of religion, they don't even know how to have a relationship with Jesus no more. And he says, I ain't worried about your religion. I just need you to love on me. But you're going to decide to love me and nobody else. You're going to love me. <sighs> Philippians 4 said God invites us to make our own requests known to him. This church is very familiar with the scripture. It says, be careful for nothing. Say amen. amen. But everything by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. If there was ever a scripture that we need to embrace in the last days, it is this scripture. But he says, I need you to pray. And I believe we're a praying church, but he says, I need you to make supplication. Pastor, what's the difference between prayer and supplication? I'm going to give this to you real quick. In the Hebrew, the, it's used three times actually in the Bible. In the Hebrew, the first time it's used, it just means a simple request. Kind of like a flippant. Hey, dude, pick that water bottle up before it spills. Okay, thank you. That's what that is right there. It's just a flippant request. It had no meaning to it. You can put it back down. It's a flippant. It's just like you just, you just kind of naturally do it. I, I, you walk past them and say, good morning. I say, good morning. It's just flipping. It's the southern hospitality thing to do. Amen. So that's the first one. When he says make your prayer and supplication known, it's in the Hebrew, it's not that flippant thing. Listen to the second one. The second one is an expression of a desire, but for your benefit. An expression of a desire, but for your benefit. It'd be like saying, hey, baby, come give me some sugar. <laughs> we all know that would be my benefit, not hers. <laughs> Amen. But sometimes we ask God for some stuff. It, 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 it's just for us we ask him. But the third one. When he says, Cowboy Church of Orange County, I want you to make your supplication known. It's the third word, and that Hebrew word alludes to this. It is a literal, physical kneeling of a position, begging for someone to provide something. I have a little puppy named Missy. I can have a treat in my hand and Missy goes crazy for that treat. But she will come up to me doing that forward sideways walk and I will say, Missy, sit. And she will sit. I will say, Missy, shake. And Missy will shake. I'll say, Missy, ask me for it. And she'll go, And I'll feed her. But every once in a while, I'll say, sit, shake, ask me for it. And after she asks me for it, I said, no, you got to say it like you mean it. You got to beg me for it. Missy, beg me for it. She'll raise up on him back legs and go, Ooh. 
you're not going to like this and it's not going to set well with my religious folks. Sometimes God's saying, if you want that, you've got to beg me for it. Why? Because I think he's tired of how flippant we are in our relationship to him. We've started treating God like a Santa. Flippantly asking for this and flippantly asking for that. I'm here today to tell you, he says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways. That has to do with supplication that requires an obedience of me kneeling before God and saying, God, I need you. God, I'm begging you in this situation. It's proven in Hebrews when he says you can come boldly to the throne of God. Now, one of Jaylene and Carl's kids may come and ask me for 10 bucks because they were too tight to give it to them. But they would do it in a very nervous kind of manner. And kind of looking to the left and looking to the right and making sure mom and dad wasn't hearing this. This isn't part of the story, but yeah, I probably would give it to them. But my daughter, Jocelyn. <laughs> hey, Pop, I need some money. <laughs> you know Why? Because she knows she can come boldly to the Father. You and I should have such an awesome respect for who God is that we understand when he says make your supplications made known that we can go boldly to God for whatever we need in this room and it be supplied more abundantly than we can ever imagine. And to help you, no, Jocelyn would not have approached me that way. But she would have batted her eyes and sat on my knee and said, hey, Pop, I love you. I know you love me, baby. You're the best dad in the world. I know, baby. <laughs> and here's what I'm telling you. Today you're here and I'm here and we all have needs. God just wants you to say, hey, you're the best. You, 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 you're the only God. You're the best God and the only God. And, and, and God, I love you. And he goes, yeah, I know you do. Because I see. Not here. I see what you're doing. Look at your neighbor and say, God sees you. Today we can be broken for chains. <clears throat> For Deuteronomy chapter 11, 13 says this, and I want you to listen to the symbolism here. And it shall come to pass if you hearken diligently to my commands. There it is. If you will hearken diligently to my commands, which I've commanded you this day, to love the Lord your God, to serve him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, I will give you the rain on your land in due season. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Say, Lord, I'm ready for the rain. I will give you the rain of your land in this due season, the first rain and, rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your corn, that you will gather up your wine and your oil. And what you lose on that $1 to that $5 deal, verse 15, I will send you grass in thy field for thy cattle that thou mayest eat and that you may be full. You see, he said, hearken diligently. I want to tell you what hearken diligently is as we get ready for invitation. It means to listen to God attentively, but watch, 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 with the intent to obey. With the intent. See, we can come here and listen to God, but I'm asking you today, are you going to leave here with the intent to obey? That's to hearken diligently. 
I'm listening to God and I'm doing it with the intent to obey. In other words, God, you just say it, I'll do it. I'm all in. But here's a word, the word that's synonymous with this. It says to do respectfully and happy while you're doing it. I've told y'all a lot of stories about my dad, but I was about nine years old. He told me to go mow the yard. Now, I don't know if he saw me doing like this out in the yard or just saw the, the facial expressions. I don't know what he did. But while I'm mowing, all of a sudden that black belt comes across the backside of my rear. I didn't know it was coming. I screamed like a girl. And I stopped the mower. He said, son, when I tell you to do something, you act like you're happy to do it. I want to tell you, I believe God's telling us the same thing. We need to do what we do for God, and we need to act happy to do it because of what he's done for us by sending his son to the cross of Calvary. Stand right now. Mm -hmm.